for you as the Cup fan, you're trying to rally, trying to find a way to win games, keep the momentum going, and get yourself into the playoffs. I know that that's the goal. But yesterday's game felt like a playoff game, even though we're talking about a game that took place here in August. The Cubs and the Guardians, in which the Cubs lose 9-8. to eight. Hell of a ball game. Cubs are behind. They rally, and they fall short 9-8. to eight. The Cubs this morning are four, four games behind in the wild card after yesterday's game. So I, the ebb and flow of it was great, but the result is not what you wanted. Yeah, had a 3 nothing lead. Then you're down 8-3. You roar back, get the sack fly from Saya to tie it in the eighth. And then when, when the day came, I still remember it. You said, check Twitter. Look and see what the Cubs just did. What? Craig Council's going to the Cubs. Remember that? Mm-hmm. It was like Rosenthal. Uh, <laughs> Council makes decision, dot, 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 Cubs. What? Yeah. What do you mean? Call you back, kid. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Last night, I thought he was awful. Okay, Julian Merriweather missed like three months. Has not pitched multiple innings in a game since April 5. It's not as like, it's not as though... This guy, that's what he does. Oh, yeah, put him in. He can give you two, three. No. Hasn't done it since April 5th. I looked up these stats. Tyson Miller, who's been really, really good, hasn't pitched, I believe, since Friday. Mm -hmm. I don't believe Smiley has pitched since Friday. You had guys that were fresh. You had Lopez up to start the bottom of the eighth, warming up. If he's warming up, why is he not in the game? He's your best reliever right now. You fell into it because he got into a scrape with the Mets management and they released him. Oh, we'll take him. He's been outstanding. Mm -hmm. You go multiple innings with a guy who didn't throw. It's not as though he was amazing in the seventh. There was strong exit velocity against him. Strong. Ah, let's go. Because you got batted ball luck. You're going to go back to this guy for a second inning, and he gets the ever-living H-beaten out of him. Here comes Jose Ramirez. Yeah, that's the guy I want him facing for his second inning. Bam! Off the right field wall. Now you get one. Dansby tries. He dives for it and can't come up with it. Now you got two men on. And then Naylor bounces one in the left field that nobody – you had to be 12 feet tall to catch it. Right. There's your ball game because Class A coming in – .66 0.66 ERA entering action last night. 0.66. Yeah. Good night, Mindy. Good night, Mindy. Take that. See you later. Yeah. When he comes in, I don't know. It's, it's like what Goldhammer from ESPN Cleveland tweeted. He says, I don't know who's going to win the awards, but Classy is like, Class A is our MVP. Correct. He's like, he's the guy. Like, as soon as he comes in, Cap, there's no shot. I mean, None. shut it down. It's just pathetic managing last night. Pathetic. Here's Craig Council. We played really good offense today. Um, you know, even had some balls hit with men in scoring position that didn't fall, especially early in the game. Um, so it was, a, it was a really good offensive night and a, and a nice nice battle back to, to tie the game. I mean, they hit two balls for home runs. Um, I don't, maybe maybe the Quan ball is a strike, but, um, you know, look, two pretty good pitches. So, you know, give them credit for that. I mean, even the, the Pearson home runs, pretty good pitch. Um, so I'll give him credit for that. You know, that's just baseball, unfortunately. I know we, we, it's it's no fun, but it's you know I, I thought Julian pitched well and no, he didn't. Some batted ball, like, you know, a good hitter. You know, he got ahead of Ramirez, which was you know that would have been a big out, obviously. Um, he left, it looks like I think he left a changeup or a slider up a little bit. Um, tough guy to retire, and then I thought he made some pitches to the next two guys, and unfortunately they they got the ball through. Well, yeah, I mean, we did make their bullpen work. Um, they had some guys they were staying away from tonight, probably. Um, but we did, we did went through their bullpen pretty good, and hopefully, you know, hopefully that pays dividends later in the series. No, that is a bunch of crap that he just said to you. And very disappointed. Now, again, I'm not there in the locker room. That's a previous life. I'm not there in Cleveland, previous life. But guess what? I did not hear one person ask him, why would you go to Merriweather for two innings? The inning before he got a double play, you heard him say, I think he pitched well. 
Do you know what the exit velocity was on the double play ball? Mm. According to my guy, Sam Olber, who covers the Cubs. 107. That ain't a slow roller for those out there wondering, is that hit hard? Rocket. And they got a double play ball because Nico Horner's a beast defensively. So a 107-mile-an-hour double play ball, you decide that's who I'm bringing back for another inning to face Ramirez and to have Josh Naylor, two of the best hitters in the sport, professional hitters. I mean, just horrible managing. The dumbest managing, and it pissed me off. You can't imagine. Yeah, and here's the Cleveland Guardians cap that are battle-tested. They play solid baseball all year round. But once again, sometimes I'm watching the Cubs, especially when they lose a tough game like this, and I wonder, is that just counsel saying, well, this is what I got to work with? I, I think that Ross was like that as well toward the end. He's like, well, what do you want me to work with? The last thing you want, Cap, is to be able to be on the precipice of getting to the playoffs. And once again, you fall short because A, managing, but B, ineptitude in that bullpen. Uh, uh, Right? You don't want to deal with that again. Correct. And the bullpen since like June 27th has been the best in baseball. Why? Okay, you navigated the seventh with Merriweather, even though they hit the ball hard off him. Why would you not go to your best reliever there against their best hitters? Who's the leadoff hitter? Ramirez. He's an all-star. All All right. Lopez, you're already warmed up. You're in. Yeah. No, I'll stick with Merriweather again. Bam! Off the right field wall. I mean, I was furious. And Lopez gives you the clean inning that you were looking for in that spot. Oh, I was furious. I came in to the kitchen. I just bought a Ninja Creamy. I'll tell you about that later. I'm going to eat my healthy ice cream that I made. The Cubs tied it. It's 8-8. I'm like, here we go. And guess what? My manager let me down. He let everybody in Cub Nation down. He let his team down because he made a stupid-ass decision. Well, one thing for sure is that this Cubs team, at least as of late, is not a team that lays down. There was a time early in the summer that if the Indian, if the Guardians had the lead, that's it. The Cubs would not come back. And you saw some great um, offense, especially from Dansby Swanson in a big spot. Swanson looking for some green grass and he'll find it out in left field. Suzuki scores. Paredes comes in. Here comes Nico Horner to the plate and he'll slide in safely. On the overthrow, Swanson to third. And it is a one run game. And the hidden streak now at seven in a row for Swanson as three more score. Swanson's cooking. Just for you. No question that he was cooking yesterday. He was cooking in a big spot. He's been much better as of late. He yeah. has. But, Hoodie, come on, man. I mean, what are we doing here? You got to make sound decisions. If you told me, guess what? Merriweather pitches multiple innings. He does it all the time. He navigates it, and, and we get beat? Okay. He had done it since April 5th, and he spent three months on the injured list. And now against Ramirez and Naylor, and I can't remember who the middle hitter was that got the hit that Dansby couldn't quite get to. That, that's what we're doing. That is stupid baseball. You should have to answer for it. Here's a question, though, about Craig Council. And is we come back around this again. I was wondering why David Ross was let go, and I realized that from the Cubs' standpoint, they thought they were upgrading in Craig Council. What has Council done this year? Like in in a situation like this, game on the line, you want to push the right buttons, Cap. It's two things, pushing the right buttons and also the team has to execute, especially when you're behind in the game, you come back to tie it, and then you lose it on a decision like that. So what does that say for Council? What does that say for him so far this season? Because to me, uh, there is no letter grade. It's just he's there. Is there anything particular like, boy, you know what, the way he inspires, the way he, how he speaks through the media, the, the way he pushes the right button? I haven't seen any of that this year. He's fine. I don't – he's fine. He's, he's a solid baseball man. Eight million a year, the best manager in the sport that everybody has in the game says. That guy's the best strategist in the game. Okay, then then where's the issues here? The fact is that your general manager president, Jed, who's done some very – let me be clear here. The Michael Bush trade, 
outstanding. Mm -hmm. The signing of Imanaga, outstanding. He's done some really good things. Fixing his bullpen on the fly this year when they were horrible, outstanding. Entering two straight seasons without a closer, and please don't you dare over there at 1060 tell me at West Addison, well, we had Al's alive. What are you talking about? He's not a closer. He does not have the balls to be a closer. He's a setup guy. Good stuff. And now he's out for over a year with Tommy John. So you better find a closer before next season. I don't want to hear you go, well, we'll find one on the fly and see who emerges. Are you trying to win or not? Well, Cap, you have to hit the right buttons as a manager, though. That's why I'm asking you specifically about Craig Council. Yeah, it's on Jed because we've been talking about it all season because you had to know last year you were close to be able to get to the playoffs, but you didn't have enough pitching down the stretch. Do you want to go through this again where you're playing good baseball at the end and the reason why you don't get in is because of pitching, but also it's about the expensive manager that they were able to acquire. And that guy's got to be able to push the right buttons, Cap. He had a he, bad night had, last night. Well, I mean, that's, that's only fair. You, I mean... I know that and we talked about this earlier in the season where council is almost like what Jesse told us. He's observing because he doesn't know the ball club that well. He knows he's in the uniform with the Cubs, but he's observing who he can trust and who he can't trust. It's August, man. And now you're kind of back. At, you're trying to get yourself back in the race. You were three and now you're four back. And the, if, but his decisions like that, they'll keep you underwater trying to get to the wild card. Totally agree. That was a terrible, terrible. There is no scenario that that was a good decision. Even if he navigated it, it was a stupid decision. Also, let's bring this up as well as an aside cap. Imanaga. Hmm. Second or third time around. Again, it's Cleveland. It's a team that's been, it's one of the class teams in baseball, especially in the American League. Yep. Second to third time around. They're 70 and 49 for a reason. They're really good. I mean, Imanaga is an all-star and has been the best pitcher for my money all season long. Now, he did in the fourth inning, and again, these are not excuses, just a fact. He got a terrible call that should have been a strike to get him out of a uh, situation. And that was not – obviously, you can't review it. I'm not for robo-umps. Never going to be for robo-umps. They got to be better. That is a strike in every strike zone in the world. There's no doubt he was squeezed, but an Imanaga always dances on the corners. He does. Doesn't he? He does. It's it's tough for the hitter because it's like, should I swing at this or should I take it? Because it's always close. And depending who's behind the plate, if it's on the corners, some will call it and some won't. And you got to adjust. And it was not good for, for Imanaga. It was not. No. The second or third time around. It nope. was not good. His line last night. Uh, Seven hits in five innings, seven runs, but three earned because there was an error by Paredes. That has to get cleaned up. Huh. One walk, three strikeouts. He gave up two home runs. And then Nate Pearson in an inning gave up a run. Merriweather imploded in the eighth. And then Lopez came in with a perfect inning with a strikeout. There's your ball game. And you're not hitting Class A. He's got 36 saves. Just... There's no one, no one within 10 saves of him. No. And there were a lot of people that wanted the Cubs to trade for him this last winter. His contract, I don't know what he was thinking, is so team-friendly that they asked for, like, such an insane package from anyone. That's why he's still pitching in Cleveland. He's so good, he should be sponsored by Rolades. Yes. He, the award should be the Emmanuel <laughs> Class A award. <laughs> it's a, yes. he, once I saw him come through the gate, Cap, that's all. That'll be all. No one's hitting him. He, but there, but such, a, he, uh, to me, felt like a playoff game I was watching yesterday. It was a hell of an entertaining game. By the way, ERA for Class A now down to .65. It's all over. Point. Yeah, he's he's awesome. He's he is awesome. Absolutely awesome. But the way that the Cubs came back in that game, though, Cap, because you more times than not, okay, well, you can shut the light off. Uh, here they come. Getting into that bullpen of the Guardians. Now, that's a hell of a strategy by a council. It's like, well, you know, we went through Avila and and Barlow and somebody and, and Sandlin, Class A. We went through there. Yeah, we'll be able to get them back uh, today because we went through that bullpen. Uh, they're battle tested, Craig. You think their arms are going to be tired today? They're used to being out there. Correct. What kind of strategy is that? You're correct. 
Like, and that will be a fine. Like, uh, please tell me that Class A is not available today. I have to look up his game log, but that guy is so freaking good. By the way, uh, Paredes is good, right? I, I think uh, I think someone else can get that ball. So there's some questionable plays at third base. He has to be a vacuum over there, Cap. He's got to be better, man. He does. So Class A would would not will not pitch tonight. No matter the situation. That's fair. He's pitched in the on the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th. There's no way they're using him four straight days. No way. You have to find a way to beat them tonight. Yeah. Tonight's as important a game as you played in a long, long time. Yeah. You got a chance here. Against the class of baseball, one of the better teams in the league. Correct. And the Cleveland Guardians. And no question about it. And they are starting Javier Assad tonight. Ah. Your guy. He'll settle it down, Cap. It'll be fine. I hope that that is an accurate statement. Uh, pitching matchup tonight is Boyd against Assad. It, Boyd against Assad. So Matthew all, Boyd, former Tiger, I think. He's coming off the couch. He's terrible. The in the Guardians, rather, their their rotation is like a mash unit. They're all dead. You have to win tonight. Yeah, I don't uh, believe he's pitched yet this year. So we'll take a look at that. So 312-332-ESPN, 332-3776. Shane, let's open the phone lines. Uh, if you had a chance to watch that game, hell of a ball game, but the Cubs fall short 9-8 to eight against the Guardians. We want to get your thoughts. If you're on hold, you will be on the air. What did you think of Craig Council's decision by staying with Merriweather yesterday? Again, Cubs had a chance to win that game, and then the bullpen, once again, one of the um, issues with this team, the reason why they're 59-61 and 61 this morning. So 312-332-3776 is our phone number. We're talking Cubs with you on the Cap and J-Hood Morning Show.